Let's make that six wins in a row. Let's make that the Warriors are in the plan and now they're focusing on the teams above them. Folks, this has been a roller coaster of a season for the Golden State Warriors. They're borderline <laughs> schizophrenic. And right now, though, they're on the upswing. They're dominating teams on the road. This was pure perfection when it comes to what you want from the team you're rooting for, Dub Nation. The Golden State Warriors are looking damn good right now. And with just six games to play, this is how you want your team playing going into the postseason. Peace out, Rockets. The focus is on the Lakers. Focus might be on the Kings. Focus might be on the Suns and Pelicans. We'll break it all down next. The Splash Brothers ruled the roost. Trace Jackson Davis proving he belongs. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first lesson every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube where we're exclusively live. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 200 bucks if your bet wins that's a hell of a promo by the way visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started you can follow me cyrus Sotzes, your host for the evening on threads at dog wild it's also where the program is at at locked on warriors good evening welcome to the show that is the golden state warriors thriving final score tonight in a game they led from start to finish 133 110 the splash brothers making things splash they look like their old selves but in a game that that showcased a combination of veterans reminding the world they still have it and youngsters showing that they're on the up and coming and they belong the warriors dominated and the veterans again splash the splash brothers led the way there not to mention Draymond Green with a phenomenal game defensively running the offense as as their general but statistically the, it's not going to show that he dominated except for net rating where he was a staggering plus 26 and that didn't even lead the team but the splash brothers both players scored 29 points tonight and besides those veterans though trace jackson davis i mean th this team is not where they are without him they're not and him starting as their center moving draymond green to the power forward position you're reaping the rewards of Dre not being punished as severely, being that small big man defending much larger human beings. Trace Jackson Davis taking a lot of the stress off Draymond's back, no pun intended. And he had a career high tonight, 20 points in this game. Added five rebounds. The player who leads the team in field goal percentage continued doing so, going 8 of 10 from the field. This was a beautiful performance, again, from old and young alike for a 133-110 victory. But before I get to what the individuals did, I want to point out something interesting to start things off. And I highlighted this a year ago as a sign that the Warriors in 2022-2023 were in trouble. And that's their third quarter output. The Golden State Warriors, every season they've won a championship, have led the NBA in third quarter differential. That became a huge part of their identity for the vast majority of this dynasty come out of the half like gangbusters and demolish the opposition. And we didn't see that last year. And in doing the research after I, a year ago, saw them come out time and time and again out of the tunnel for the second half, only to, to uh, uh, put out a lackluster effort. My good friend, Larry Kruger, thankfully asked Steve Kerr about that a year ago in an interview when he was hosting on uh, the Warriors flagship radio station, uh, 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 95, seven, the game. And Steve Kerr alluded to the team aging. He, you know, like usual, did not give a specific answer, dodged the, the question. But there is no doubting there is a correlation between the Warriors and how they play in that third quarter versus how things end up. 
to put it in perspective, the last title they won, again, in every year they've won a championship, they led the NBA in third quarter differential. This season, they're third, and they're at plus 2.6 in the third quarter. A year ago, they were just plus 0.5. All right, so their 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 net rating in the third quarter has increased by over two points a game. That's significant. And a year ago, they finished 11th in the NBA in third quarter differential. This year, they're third. And the only reason why they're third and not first because that plus 2.6 is almost identical to their number the last time they won a championship. That was that year in 2022. They were a plus 2.7 in third quarter differential. This season, they're plus 2.6. They're just behind the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are plus 2.8, and the Minnesota Timberwolves are the NBA's best second half team, or I'm sorry, best third quarter team, with a third quarter differential of plus 3.5. But nonetheless, the Golden State Warriors, as a third quarter team, as, as a team that is coming out for that third quarter and putting teams away, that has been their identity. And the adjustments are being made. The focus is there. They're engaged. And tonight was no exception where th they went into the, the half. And granted, there was they were dominating this game. They, they had a comfortable lead going into the half. They led by 15 points. Bob Fitzgerald on the broadcast re uh, alluding repeatedly to the fact that the team has never had 15 turnovers, which is what they had at the half, um, alongside a 15-point lead, which has apparently never happened in franchise history. But... They came out, and you knew the Rockets were going to come out in the third quarter and try to reduce the lead and try to come back. Houston's season was on the line. That was a wounded animal out there that the Warriors, in theory, should have had some difficulty putting away. They didn't face any difficulties. Again, they led this game from start to finish. They outscored the Rockets in the third quarter. It wasn't a dominant third quarter because, again, Houston was playing for their entire season. But the fact that the Warriors still outscored them, granted by just a point, but they still outscored them, 34-33. to 33. That 15-point halftime lead became 16 points. They finished this game winning by 23 points. And folks, this Golden State Warriors team, second most victories in the NBA since, I believe, January 15th behind just the Boston Celtics. And who knows what's going to happen right now? There is no predictability in terms of what's going to happen with the Golden State Warriors in the postseason. If they lose that playing game, colossal disappointment. But the way this team is playing right now, they're gunning for the L.A. Lakers. They're just a game back in the loss column. That game on April 9th, we're now just five games away, could represent the entire season because if they win that game, they win the tiebreaker over the Lakers. And if they get that game at home, even though this team has been unbelievable on the road this season, with tonight's win, they've won 15 of their last 18 on the road that is staggering and these the road success literally is because of the chemistry of this team these guys like each other clay thompson referred in the post game interview to the fact that they all understand their roles now they they know each one individually knows what they need to do for this team to find success and is coming together at the right time folks six games remaining and the golden state warriors are surging the houston rockets not officially eliminated but they're pretty much out of it now because they trail the golden state warriors by four and they also don't have the tiebreaker so the warriors really lead in the standings by five games with six to play they could literally clinch uh that 10th playing spot if they beat the mavericks tomorrow and the houston rockets lose their next game i think the rockets play uh tomorrow as well uh, Houston, in fact, just looking this up really quickly, their game tomorrow will be against uh, the Miami Heat. Yes, they do play tomorrow at home. So if Miami beats the Rockets and the Warriors beat Dallas in Dallas, they officially clinch that 10 seed. It's no longer, uh, you know, just an unofficial clinching of the 10 seed, but it's over, folks. This, this thing is done in terms of the 10 seed. It would take a minor miracle. So now the focus is on the Lakers. And now the focus is on the Sacramento Kings. Now the focus is even still, it's they're within reach. The Phoenix Suns and New Orleans Pelicans. I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't count on that. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, the Warriors right now, again, just one game behind the LA Lakers in the loss column. Uh, the Lakers right now are 44 and 33. The Warriors are now 42 and 34. And again, that game next Tuesday is could be for all the marbles in terms of home court, and that could matter. I know the Warriors are 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 
exponentially better on the road this season. They're now 23 and 15 on the road, 19 and 19 at home. But I, I want that game at home. I do not want Stephen Curry, who in his career has struggled playing at crypto, uh, to have the entire season on the line in that arena where he routinely struggles. Let's get this game in their comfy confines of Chase Center. But again, the LA, I'm sorry, the Sacramento Kings are within reach as well. The Kings just have a two game lead over the Golden State Warriors in terms of the win loss column. Um, now, I haven't done my research in terms of tiebreakers between those two teams. Uh, if I have a chance to do that today, I will. Um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head if they split their season series, uh, but the Kings would win the tiebreaker if it comes down to division record. The Kings are 10 and 6 in the division on the year. The Warriors currently 6 and 9, so they're not going to catch them there. Um, but it's not just the Kings. And the one game above the Kings, and this is to avoid the play in altogether, still possible. Unlikely, yes, but still possible. The Phoenix Suns right now and the New Orleans Pelicans are tied for the six seed. They're both 45 and 31. That's only three games ahead of the Warriors. So, look, there's six games to play. I know it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. And this Warriors team is engaged. They're focused. And who knows what could come up. And Greg Gordon, you're absolutely right. The Kings have a brutal schedule coming up. I mentioned already that uh, they're going to be playing the, the Celtics tomorrow. And even though the Celtics don't have much to play for, something tells me there's a lot of pride at stake there in terms of them wanting to finish with, you know, a, a, an incredible regular season record where I'm guessing 65 wins would be a goal for them. Uh, the 66 is still in play for them as well. Um, but the Kings real fast uh, just because their, their name has come up. And right now they're within striking distance of the Warriors. Their remaining schedule, they have six games left. They play the Celtics in Boston tomorrow. Now, unfortunately, they play at Brooklyn Sunday. That should be an easy win for them. But then they're in Oklahoma City. That will not be easy. Then they host the New Orleans Pelicans. Not easy. Then they host the Phoenix Suns. Not easy. And then they finish up the season with the Portland Trailblazers. So of those six remaining games, Sacramento has two gimmies at Brooklyn and at home against the Trailblazers. But four of those six are challenging. They could easily lose those four. And the way the Warriors are rolling who knows what what could happen? One last interesting thing uh, regarding records and and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, just checking out the chat right now. Um, one other thing to mention, by the way, the Warriors last season uh, were forty four and thirty eight. That was their final uh, record. And for that record, they finished as a six seed. They avoided the play in. They they were uh, rewarded with the Sacramento Kings in the first round. We all know how that turned out. Stephen Curry's historic fifty pointer in Game Seven to put the, the Northern California little brothers away. Um, this year, the Warriors are two games below that right now. The Warriors now have a record of, for, excuse me, of 42 and 34. So they, in theory, could finish this season 48 and 34 if they win out. Mo in all likelihood, they're going to have more wins than they did a year ago when they won 44. But they have no chance in hell. Uh, I shouldn't say that, but it's very unlikely that they're going to reach the sixth seed again. The sixth seed was pretty much clinched at this point last season. That's how much better the West is. The West is so damn good. Like this Houston Rockets team is not bad. It, it, it makes it that much more impressive that the Warriors just completely just mopped the floor with them. But this Rockets team would easily be what a seven seed and eight seed. I'm not talking just about record. I'm talking about just the body of work, just how good they are. The Rockets would be so much higher. They would be a playing team in the Eastern Conference. But in this West, that is just deep, talented completely unpredictable. I know the Nuggets are the favorites, but who knows who's coming out of this? The Warriors still have an excellent shot to pull it off. They got the talent. They got the experience. It's all about whether or not which team shows up. And if it's the focused one, if it's the engaged one, anything could happen this postseason. But I want to talk about the individuals uh, who succeeded in tonight's game. There were quite a few of those uh, and so much more when we come back. Got to give some love. Uh, yeah, Kev, you're absolutely right. Uh, the West, it, 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 going back like 30 years, in nearly every season, the Western Conference has been the far superior, um, uh, has been the far superior conference. And Adrian, thank you so much, man. You have no idea how much your kind words mean. Uh, hit that subscribe button, please, um, if you don't mind. And yeah, Mitchell, Warriors, 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 baby. This was a hell of a game, man. I mean, this was, this was important. I, I can't emphasize enough. When your opposition is facing their entire season, and you're still coming out there and winning the third quarter. That's a hell of a sign. And the Splash Brothers, Draymond, Trace Jackson, Davis, 
th- th- that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of who showed up tonight. Gary Payne, the second, had a great game. I thought Chris Paul played a solid game. Wiggins had a letdown, but defensively, he was clutch in certain moments. We got a lot more to discuss after we give some love to our sponsors for this fine evening. Very cold in the area, by the way. I don't know if you folks have noticed that if you're around here. First up, though, on the agenda. Who is paying our bills tonight? Who do we owe a sincere thanks to? Let's start things off with a sponsor that I am a customer of, and that's Amazon, and more specifically, Fire TV. It always makes me pull out the Beavis and Butthead sound effect if I had one. Fire, fire. Um. Uh, anyways, Fire TV. Let's talk about them for a minute. Our first sponsor for this evening. Fire TV is your destination for sports, obviously. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. TV and they've recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On, most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness still in play. It's this April 4th. NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. I I'm, I'm, I'm own a Fire TV. It's right there. It's where I watch all my Warriors games and so much more. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. And today's episode is also brought to you by the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, and that is FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 that you can use to bet on what's left of the tournaments, Major League Baseball, NBA games, NHL, so much more. Yes, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Are you tired of all the yelling and screaming and uh, hyperbolic verbiage on ESPN or Fox Sports all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And real fast, I also want to give some love to uh, a relatively new program on the Locked On lineup, and that's Locked On Bay Area, a program that is focused entirely on Bay Area sports. So besides the Warriors, if you're a fan of the Giants, fan of the Niners, I don't know if the Raiders, I mean, the Oakland A's, that's what a mess that is. I don't know if the Raiders fall into that or if they're fully uh, 100% now in Vegas country, whatever it is. If you love Bay Area sports, San Jose Sharks, since you mentioned as well, go check out Locked on Bay Area, uh, where apparently our show is going to be um, cycled on that, on that channel soon. Uh, once they reach certain numbers, I think it's going to become a 24-7 uh, channel. And so Locked on Warriors, I think it's going to be restreamed there as well. But check out Locked on Bay Area that's also available. Uh, Stephen Curry in this game tonight was fantastic. Um, Richard Marquez, by the way, uh, asking any forecasting thoughts if the Warriors beat the Mavericks tomorrow. Absolutely not. Uh, again, this game just ended right now, but you did uh, make me uh, ask myself and and the question I'm going to ask myself that I want to answer to the audience is what is the line for that game tomorrow? Um, and I also want to look up how the Mavericks uh, are, are doing in terms of the standings because I actually have no idea um, what their stake in this whole thing is. But right now, in terms of the fit, oh, look, I got to, 
I went to the wrong site. Uh, I'm going to look up the FanDuel Sportsbook real fast because I want to see what that spread is. So where is my FanDuel Sportsbook? And of course, during a live program, when I want it and need it the most, it's not opening up for me, damn it. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the line for uh, for tomorrow's game. I just can't get it. It is not opening right now. Gosh darn it. Well, I'll look that up later when I can. Um, my guess right now is, look, the, the, the Warriors, the way they performed the last time they played, I know it was just a few games ago, was exemplary. Um, and the Warriors right now, they have all the momentum on the planet. And um, I'm feeling good about it. I mean... I, I know it's a it's a back to back, but uh, Jonathan Kaminga, who's missed um, five straight games now, which is fascinating in a lot of regards, um, in the sense that the Warriors are winning all these games while he while he's out. Uh, I would not read into that. I know there's a couple of trolls out there who who the moment the Warriors do anything reasonably good that doesn't include Jonathan Kaminga, they immediately want to uh, you know talk about trading him. I mean, look, look first of all. The, uh, so apparently I can't open the page right now because I'm in California. So that's what's going on. Um, apparently, uh, look, first of all, you can't trade anyone right now. Okay. You can't trade anyone until the off season. So it's, it's a moot point to begin with, but secondly, who are you going to trade Jonathan Kaminga for? Okay. I'm addressing the trolls right now. All right. Let's say you want to trade Jonathan Kaminga. Who would you trade him for? That is worth it. If you tr like, it's, it's awesome that the warriors have won five in a row without him. Okay. It's phenomenal. But it's important to note that none of the teams they've beaten are upper echelon elite squads. When you look at the biggest wins this season, they've almost all involved Kaminga. He's a top three player on this team in terms of net rating, which means the team wins when he plays. He's one of the only individuals who brings size to the table. A huge reason they've been playing so well without him recently has been because Trace Jackson Davis has seen a larger role. He started, his, his, his uh, starts have coincided with Kaminga's injury. That's been the adjustment for Steve Kerr. And so I'm also very curious to know what happens with Trace Jackson Davis because he is absolutely showing his worth and his value. And I don't know if they're winning these games without him either. Um, but cool it on the Kaminga hate, man. I, I do not understand why there's a small section of you that hate that kid uh, when all he's doing is great things for this team. And, and for those that say they've never won without him, he was on the roster. Just side note, when they won the championship, he was literally on the team along with Moses Moody. He was starting games in that postseason. So I, I just don't understand the hate for Kaminga. But nonetheless, if you're going to trade him, you're giving up your entire future. And it depends largely on who you get back. I would not entertain that thought at all. Kaminga is the future. He's a he's a bright kid. He's an incredibly talented individual. Um, so don't don't ever come to me if you want to entertain that conversation. So um, we're not we're not going there. Uh, anyways, we're going to talk about the standings in just a moment. The Dallas Mavericks, by the way, uh, I could not open the sports book tonight, which is unfortunate, but again, we're in California. I literally just uh, dealt with restrictions. <laughs> That's why I couldn't open the sports book, which was kind of unfortunate. But in terms of the standings, the Mavericks are fifth and the Mavericks right now have a game lead on the Phoenix Suns and New Orleans Pelicans. So the Mavericks have a lot to play for here. They're also just a game and a half behind the L.A. Clippers for the four seat, two back in the loss column. So they're going to be out playing. They're going to be actually trying. Like, they have they have a, a lot of stake here as well, besides the Warriors. But look, if this Warriors team is rolling right now, I, I would not doubt for even of it. I would not put it beside anyone. I would not put it beside the Warriors um, to doubt them. Like, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm not making sense. The point is, I do think the Warriors are going to win uh, tomorrow. And um, I'm really excited for that game. That's going to be a big game because the Warriors are now gunning for the Lakers. Um, they're now gunning for the Sacramento Kings who are collapsing right before our eyes. Um, yeah, should be a big game. Um, and we'll be back at this live tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a lot more to discuss to wrap it up. I have not even read off Steph and Clay's stats for this evening just because um, they had phenomenal nights. Clay, especially after the first quarter, uh, he had a bit of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde uh, opening quarter to this game. He had three turnovers uh, in that first quarter, but I believe he also had 11 points. And thankfully, uh, the Dr. Jekyll side won out. The rest of the game, Clay was fantastic. Um, we'll talk about his stats. I got to give Trace Jackson Davis his due because this team is not doing all this if he's not playing real minutes. It is not a coincidence that Trace Jackson Davis has increased his role and this Warriors team is rolling at the same time. Uh, so we'll talk about that and so much more as we wrap this up. But again, the Warriors, a huge win. 
over the Houston Rockets to all but clinch the 10 seed, and they're rolling going into the postseason. Who knows what's going to happen? I, I promise you this. No other team in the Western Conference wants to play the Warriors in the first round. None of them. Uh, not even the Nuggets. Nobody wants to see this Warriors team, a squad that is still full of players with four championship belts around their waist. Who the hell wants to see that? And that's who's steamrolling right into the postseason. It's definitely something to be excited for if you're a member of Dub Nation. And we'll talk about that and so much more after we give love to one final sponsor for this evening. And that sponsor is Robinhood. Talk about taking care of your finances. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement Thanks to their IRA with a 3% match, this offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. This claim as of quarter one 2024 is validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. You are locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. For the everydayers, we were right back at this tomorrow. It's Warriors at the Mavericks. Huge game, uh, simply because the Warriors right now trail the Lakers by just one in the loss column. They trail the Kings by just three in the loss column. So there's still a lot to play out here. And so that game is huge. And we'll be back right at it. Uh, with Friday Night Live post-game coverage. I might have a guest joining me. All that to be determined. And if you follow me on threads at Dog Wild, I post updates regularly on the show and regarding the show, uh, so make sure you follow me there. Um, Stephen Curry, got to give some love to him real fast because uh, Steph had a fantastic game. I don't know if you saw, if you folks saw this. Steph, um, again, this has been the most emotional year for Steph. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if I can't read his mind. So I don't know if it's like literally the most emotional for him, but he's certainly been expressing himself emotionally more than we've ever seen him. Dude's kicking chairs. Dude is, is literally uh, communicating without words to Draymond Green regarding his last ejection. Side note, by the way, how good has Draymond Green been since that last ejection? We're not seeing him talk to refs. We're seeing him focused. Um, I, this is, this is quite possibly the best version of Draymond we've seen all year. And it came right after that ejection four minutes in, uh, where Stephen Curry was not pleased at all. So the, the great news in that front is Draymond Green is playing some damn good basketball and we are not seeing him jawing with the refs lately, which is huge. You're noticing a massive difference in his game and in how the team is playing as a result of that, you're not getting those ridiculous uh, whistles and the bias from the refs seem to have diminished a little bit. But Stephen Curry was getting some more of that non-superstar treatment in the first half of this game. Uh, there were a few calls that were just utter BS. I don't know how to spin it any other way. And it's not even spin. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how you could say this without objectivity that he's just being screwed over left and right. There was an elite, I thought it was the second quarter of this game. There was an illegal screen called on Steph with, and the play was entirely in, incidental. He's literally just running on the court. He bumped into another player. I can't remember if it was uh, Fred Van Vliet or who it was, but the refs called him for an illegal screen. He wasn't even setting up his screen. He was just running as part of a set play and they called an illegal screen on him. That was colossally disappointing. Soon after that, we had a play where Draymond Green got this incredible offensive rebound. It was not easy. He passed it to Steph. Steph 
drove in and, and nailed the floater. It, that was not an easy shot either, which should have been a plus one. He should have gone to the free throw line. I think that play is when Steph really started to get irritated towards the referees because they didn't blow the whistle on that play. Then there was another play. And this is the one where, we, where, where I think you started to see agitation on Steph's face. He made yet another one of those insane rainbow threes, right? And, and I don't think any other, I've never seen any other player in the NBA execute these rainbows, these high arching shots where the balls like looks like it's at least 50 feet in the air. Um, and they just go in, not even touching rim. So Steph makes another one of these rainbow threes. He gets blatantly hit. It should have been a four point play. And there was no call. And so Steph is pissed at this point. Fast forward, and Fred Van Vliet is called for a foul on Steph attempting a three-pointer, right? So Steph is going to the line for three free throws. Steph was celebrating on the court. I honestly thought he was going to get a technical foul there because that celebration was very in the face of the refs, basically telling them, thank you for finally making a good call for once. Um, Van Vliet, in very irritating fashion, challenged the call, uh, claiming that Steph uh, should have been called for an offensive foul. There was no indication of that whatsoever. The Rockets went ahead and challenged it. They lost the challenge as they rightfully should have. The point is, and, and Steph got a few calls after this, but the point is, there has never been a player who's gotten worse superstar treatment than a man like Stephen Curry, who, if anyone deserves it, if anyone should be getting that treatment, it's the individual named Stephen Curry who seems to be grabbed every damn play. Um, and thankfully in this game, though, the second half, the refs started to blow the whistle. He finished the game with nine free throw attempts. But again, that was mostly in the, in the second half. Steph in the first half of this game, when they weren't calling anything, even though he was getting hammered left and right, uh, had zero free throw attempts. So all those free throw attempts came in the second half when he had nine of them. Finished the game with 29 points, but this was a very efficient night for Steph. He scored those 29 on 9 of 14 shooting. He only, only made two three-pointers in this game. Uh, only attempted six. He was attacking the rim. He was bodying up and sacrificing his body to get this win, which the team knew they needed uh, to put the Rockets away. There was also some animus between the two teams. Clay Thompson alluded to that. Clay had a, had a fa fantastic game after a... a a weird opening quarter. He scored 11 points, had three turnovers just in the opening quarter. Great news for Clay. Did not turn the ball over again the rest of the game. Finished 7 of 11 from beyond the arc, was 11 of 15 from the field. Otherwise, did not miss a shot from inside the three-point line. Finished this game with 29 points. Steph, by the way, wanted to add, I wanted to add just uh, going back to his numbers, had six rebounds, six assists and led the team with a plus 29 in net rating. Uh, so he was dominating. Clay Thompson also had 29 points in this game, also had four assists in this game, had a plus 20 in net rating. One of those assists was to Trace Jackson Davis, uh, a fantastic alley-oop, uh, which, which further uh, showed evidence of those two and their synergy and their, and their chemistry, their connection. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, this kid could someday be an elite big in the NBA, considering what he's doing in his rookie season. The only thing that's regretful when watching a play is what is just how this should have been happening sooner. Um, it's, it's a shame that Kerr waited this long, but look better late than never. Uh, and in this game, when they needed his size, he came through played just shy of 28 minutes. Again, was eight of 10 from the field, added five rebounds in this game, even at four assists to finish with 20 points. Uh, but Trace Jackson Davis has been a massively huge piece of all this. I don't think it's a coincidence that him starting is has correlated with this five game winning streak. He gives he gives so much relief to the rest of the players who finally have a shot blocker out there defensively. So there's so much less pressure on the other four guys on the court. And offensively, you're seeing the lobs. Uh, you're, you're you're seeing Trace also showing that he's a good passer. A lot of give and goes with him, for example. So. It's huge. Super stoked for Trace Jackson Davis. Super stoked uh, for the Golden State Warriors. And um, Taurus Eastland writes real fast. Let's wrap the show up here. Am I doing another joint podcast with the Locked On Rockets? No. <laughs> we, did our, we did our crossover just because the Rockets were briefly in it for a moment. The Rockets uh, are no longer... Uh, in, in play. So we're done there and we're done with the show. We'll be back at this in less than 24 hours, folks. It's warriors and Mavericks. This wild ride continues, but the warriors at a bare minimum 
are in the play-in. And that was in doubt for a brief moment. So that's huge. Congrats to the Warriors. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. Bye-bye.